I have been dreading this review for a while now. It's been sitting on my desk for about four months, and every time I try to go at it, something else seems to come up, or I want to rewrite the script, or I'm not happy with the way editing is going. And this is my third take. Let's go. Today, I'm going to be talking about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but I'm also going to be talking about the entire reboot trilogy in the context of the whole series. Let's break down each one. The 2013 reboot was extremely good as an origin story. My only problem with it was that there wasn't a new game plus mode with the dual guns, but we'll get to that. Rise did almost nothing to further the story arc of Lara Croft. It was a null state, an experience you did not have to play unless you were dying for more of the exact same thing the first gave you. This carries over into Shadow. Up until almost the end of the third title, Lara Croft has had no substantial character growth, revelations in her life, or substantial change. So let's also talk about mechanical progression from the first game to the third, there's actually a regression in how mechanics are presented to the player. However, I can really applaud Shadow for the three separate difficulty selections for combat, exploration, and puzzles. More games should do this. If you're like me and enjoy the exploration and puzzles on their own, crank that shit all the way up and figure it out for yourself. For me, it was a little frustrating remembering the controls for this, as there is no sorely missed tutorial function disguised as an explorable craft manner. It assumes you remember the controls completely from the last release, unless you're on the easiest difficulty. This is a missed opportunity in each reboot title, or in the case of Rise, Underdone. That was a genius idea to be ripped right out of the originals. The exploration? It's okay. They added haptic feedback to the triggers when you're climbing and gives a bit of a too much feeling. I'm the kind of person to usually turn off all vibration entirely already, so what do I know? Spamming the X button while you're platforming all the time because you never know when there's gonna be a prompt isn't engaging. There are skills you can take that make exploration markedly more smooth, so I did first thing and still felt it was kinda clunky. The mechanics were more solidly placed in the previous titles. The issue is, they ran out of ideas and had to keep recycling the old ones. They do this by changing up your starting gear in each game and where you obtain certain progression related items. And mix and match them to make progression feel like it's doing anything. Even though that thing isn't necessarily good. Laura at the end of the original reboot title is just as powerful as Laura at the end of any other and that adds to the feeling that there's no real character or story progression happening in each new sequel also. Maybe you're noticing a theme here. I tried to play this with both a controller and a keyboard and mouse and found that on a controller the aiming was it's absolute shit. This isn't the controller's fault. It's the forced acceleration settings that can't be turned off or modified in any way. Playing on an aim ramp you aren't familiar with or didn't choose for yourself is uh, hell. Playing this on keyboard and mouse, the platforming and exploration felt very stilted. Moving around in a 3D environment with only eight direction toggle instead of 360 degree analog, well, it's just gonna always be inferior. But it's even more grating because of how this game uses a procedural movement system. The originals also did, but this is the future, and analog controls for platforming are really the way to go, especially when things aren't made of perfectly symmetrical triangles. So you have the issue of, do I play the exploration puzzle sections on controller, the combat sections with keyboard and mouse? Do I turn the difficulty difficulty on one or the other down to fit my control scheme. This shouldn't even be a question, it should simply work flawlessly both ways. As an action game, it's really bland. Straight up shooting at people with no real movement and hiding behind a block is something I've done a million times before. Weapon variety is nice, but tacked on feeling. Weapon upgrades are unnecessary and don't feel rewarding. You get a little bit of fighting jaguars in the jungle, which is nice, but it's only a tickle of the taint in the right direction. It doesn't get there all the way. And I know the thing holding it back is the goddamn Katniss Everdeen bow in the native direction. Being forced to fight a jaguar with a bow, when both you and the jaguar, apparently, have really janky controls, it's hard to get attached to or stay in the moment. As a stealth game, it's barely functional. The timing of if NPCs are considered looking at each other by the game engine is finicky and unreliable while camera angles work against you. This combined with how the environment is pretty poorly designed for a full stealth experience is reinforcing how lame it all is. They had to add in additional mechanics to this one to make Laura have more options for staying hidden. And they're laughing. 
forced. They're not immersive at all and had very little to the experience. I'm really going off on this, but the game is best when you turn all hints off for exploration puzzles and take it slow. My job here isn't the shit on this game. I want to make it as plain as possible that I liked a lot of certain things about it, but that the experience was extremely marred. It's best when you're not playing the story. It's best when there are no enemies on screen. As far as the main story, you thought I was done with everything else. Man, am I done with this. This is the third game in, and we're still getting a flashback sequence about her parents. The time for this was two installments ago. From the first game, the cutscenes have felt like they're being directed like a cheap TV show. I thought this was gonna get better from here, but a huge portion of this is walking around talking to people and doing side quests. This isn't Tomb Raider, but more importantly, it isn't fun, it's just chores. So what about what it isn't, you know, a little slower? It's overproduced to hell. It loses all sense of atmosphere because it's all dramatic tension. I hate it. It starts to lose its meaning after a while because of just how constant it is. There's a false start in the beginning, which makes no damn sense. Why is she trapped in a cave for no reason? They cut this with a plane sequence that is revealed to have happened later, and it's an extremely lazy way to make the situation seem more intense than it needs to be. It reeks of lazy show directing. And the sad thing is, is that's already pretty intense by itself. Why'd you have to cut it like this? I absolutely have to show you this footage, which has a beautiful shot of the Peruvian jungles and how the direction is trying to ruin the atmosphere every step of the way. The Silver Crown Mountain. I'm getting closer. Someone's over there. I have to get to them. The overall ambiance, however, actually gets closer to the originals than I think the first two in this trilogy do. And the puzzles are better, but I still have a huge issue with the cutscenes and the sheer amount of character dialogue. Everyone talks too much. If you want me to take in the atmosphere, shut up. This game really does some things right, too. It's such a shame. There's piranhas, jaguars, eels, swimming mechanics, cool puzzles, there's awesome tombs dripping with history that straddles the line between reality and fiction. I took several optional history courses in college, and I love this stuff, so I appreciate it. I really do. This stuff is so good, but it's not enough. It doesn't save it. Let's address the elephant in the room and uh, use it as a metaphor. Laura's bow. In real life, if you drape your bow over you like this and have it always fed with tension, the bow itself becomes weaker over time because its default state is tense. It becomes easier and easier to pull back, which means the arrows, when they fly, have less impact force on the target. Everything about this game follows the same logic. It's too much. Less is more. I can't believe I have to say this. Less? Give me less of this. There's graying out. There's camera shake. There's music stings every five fucking seconds. I'm tired of it. It's driving me insane. Maybe too many people got assigned to work on it. Maybe now that there are no limits on what a game can be functionally, because let's be real, we've started to master it. The upper ceiling on what is too much has yet to be well established. And the problem I'm seeing is that back in the day, we had the issue of not having the hardware or know-how to do complicated things and having to design around that limitation. But recently, we've sort of blown the ceiling off of all of that. We have these extremely massive open worlds full of stuff. We have huge experiences absolutely chock full of people making content. And that is the same thing Tomb Raider falls victim to. This game looks incredible on the graphics and has so many things in it to find. Every single scene has some sort of processed effect to it. Cut scene after scripted moment after set piece is chock full of production value. But I can't tell where this game is thematically speaking or what the devs 
really are trying to get across. Because there's so many hands on this project. There's so many conflicting opinions and design decisions. I know what I'm saying is incredibly presumptuous and the games do well and are well received, but I feel it's my obligation as a game reviewer to point out this trend, this feeling I'm sure many have had. It should be mentioned that while I haven't played the original trilogy much, I did watch my parents play them as a kid, and I still have a strong sense of attachment to the series and to Laura Croft as a character. The current design, I actually love how she looks. Who they casted to voice her and all of her animations and movements are extremely well done, and I believe they nailed it. Laura in the reboot is fine. She's not the action hero that she was in the original, doing flips and stuff, but she's still a badass, just in a more stealthy way. That said, I do have my complaints about her, but it's in the direction. I feel there are moments when she's not calm and collected. But the game is trying to have character drama simply for the sake of it. When it proves that Laura Croft can still be a great character when she's cracking jokes with her friend Jonah. The chemistry between them is great, but in the intro sequence they have a shouting match for no reason that I actually winced at. Why this? Why? This is so unnecessary. It's gross. I don't want to see it. Put it away. It was so jarring. If you cut them yelling at each other, this scene is actually more impactful. Jonah! Laura! I was so worried. I failed. Was. I'm gonna help these people. And then I'll find us a plane. But the main theme of what I don't like about the new Tomb Raider and the new Laura Croft can be summed up in one phrase, if you haven't got it already. Conflict of interest. Breaking down exactly why Laura is the way she is, the director had this to say. For us, this is her defining moment. We're not going to put her in shorts with double pistols wearing a bikini. That's not what this is. It's because the twin pistols have an iconic thing about them. For this trilogy, not saying anything about later on, I don't know about the future titles, but for this trilogy, the bow is still her signature weapon. Look, the only reason they don't give her two pistols and let the players who want to cash in on their nostalgia do so, because the director is up his own ass. There's a toggle option for silencers. You could simply have a silenced pistol be one gun for the toggle, and you press the button, have her pull out the second one, and go loud. You don't even have to get rid of the bow. The game would lose absolutely nothing in tone if you did this, and it would please fans. It baffles me that the first entry ends how it does, and they still cuck you with this. When you have DLC that is purely for making money off of people for nostalgia's sake, look at this, unapologetically. And then you mock the fans for asking for small things, you go from being sincere and appreciative of your audience to predatory. It denounces the action movies that inspired the original series while banking off of current movie trends like Hunger Games without a second thought. The lack of self-awareness here is staggering. It takes itself as too important and misses the mark with its own spectacles. I don't think the new Laura is a bad character. She's fine. She's different, but she's fine. The real issue I have is the original games are something that do not take themselves seriously, and the new ones lose a huge amount of fun in concept by losing its sense of how over the top it is in production. The new Laura Croft is made to be a character who comes from a real place, has real weakness, real reactions, real tension. Ugh. But they still want to bank on the spectacle of over the top scenes, and this is how conflict of interest hangs over everything in this game. Also, if you didn't want to make her hot, you shouldn't have included this scene.
I'll be the first to tell you that I absolutely love her old design, and I am unapologetically very attached. I still think the original Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie is probably one of the best video game movies of all time. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping, because I'm thinking about this. So here's my takeaway. I cannot understand how each entry in this trilogy is supposed to be Laura Croft's defining moment. Why did you even make more than one? You can't have every time a character is on screen be their defining moment. The big thing that happens in their life and changes everything. There's no reason to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider. Just this one, just the first reboot's title. You can solidly ignore them because they add nothing to the story. They add nothing to who Laura is or what she's doing or even mechanics. They give you the same backstory and the same rundown each time, and I'm sick of it. I hate watching the same story rehashed exactly the same way three consecutive times. The first game was great, and that her defining moments were learning how to kill, learning to survive, learning that the supernatural exists. It never achieves what it sets out to do as a trilogy, even if it gets really close. If you took that idea and ran with it properly, I'd have no complaints whatsoever. If you wanted to make more games where Laura Croft is being who she became, but she never reaches the point of who she became, and remains entirely, one day she will become something. 